Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to show you even more magic. On the weekend, I showed you how to go from Unreal Engine to the Unity Game Engine. Well, today I'm going to show you how to go from the Unity Game Engine to the Godot Game Engine in like just a handful of clicks. So what you see right here, this here is an asset from Humble Bundle right now running in the Unity Game Engine. It was written for Unity, and that's what it looks like. Now here it is in Godot, all right? Unity, Godot. And they've got slightly different license, uh, slightly different lighting, of course, and that's just the nature of different engines. So here, let's take a quick boo around this particular level. I'll show you where you can get all these later on, and we're going to do a couple of import-export examples here. Uh, so if you've ever kind of watched some of these humbles and went, oh, I wish I could have those assets, hey, here you go. Godot engine, there, you have the assets. The exact same asset imported over, again, using just a few clicks. So what is this sorcery? Well, it's actually two things coming together. The first one here is something that was just released last week. It was the Unity package uh, for Godot. It was actually released just a couple days ago, uh, formally. But the reality is, this isn't the star of the show here for me. It's this guy right here. This guy has been around for a while. It's the Unidot importer, but it's always had some flaws. It always hasn't worked quite as well as I'd like it to. But using aspects of this guy, this guy here suddenly became a whole lot better. So we're going to show you some of these assets from these Humble Bundles. So uh, we're going to show some of the ones coming in from Anapik in this example. And the one you just saw was from the Eldemar Bundle, still going on right now. So if you look at these and go, oh, I don't want Unity assets. I'm a Godot user. Hey, guess what? The world just opened up for you. There are a ton of these bundles over on Humble over time, and this is going to enable you to use all of them. So how do we go about doing this? How do we bring this asset into this guy? Well, let's show you this from the very beginning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down uh, the Godot game engine like so. Da -da -da -da. And I have everything all together for us right here. So we got a command prompt here. What we're going to do is head on over here, and we're going to start with this guy right here, this Unity package project. Go ahead and clone that guy. And then head on over here into wherever you want it to be, and just do a git clone and paste. This is going to be your starting project for everything to be in it. Now, what you're going to notice, if you head back on over here to the Unity package Godot, there is... Um, instructions down here. So you can see basically it says it needs a custom version of FBX to GLTF. You could download a specific version of it by clicking these links. So go down here and you can grab it for uh, the platform that you're interested in. So in this case, I grabbed the Windows 64 version of it. And you're also going to want to grab the Unity package underscore util version. This is a, a Rust based language script that does all the processing for you. Um, so I'll just show you getting started with this guy firsthand. So the Unity package for Godot will just show you how how that guy works. So what we do, uh, take those, so we clone that guy down, and let's just say I downloaded the included file, this guy and this guy. So I've already done that for us here. So they're here right now. So we've got this zip file and this zip file. What we gotta do is open up that first zip file and grab the executable from it, and then we put it into the directory we just cloned into. Let's make sure I've got the right one here. Yep, so we paste that guy in there. And what you wanna do, regardless to which platform you're on, if you're on Windows, you wanna get rid of all of this garbage over here, so the dash Windows dash blah, blah, blah. So you're just left with fbx2gltf.exe. You wanna do the same thing on other platforms. It's just on Windows, sorry, on Linux and Mac, you don't need the .exe at the end. It is case sensitive on those platforms, by the way. And then you're gonna wanna do the exact same thing here. Grab this executable right here, and then go back into this archive and paste in the Unity, um, Unity package underscore util. And then everything after the dash windows, blah, 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 blah. Get rid of that and leave the exe. So now we've got this project ready to open up. Let's go ahead and show you that process. So we got to go uh, load up Godot. I have everything nicely in this little folder so we can see it all together. I'm going to import this guy in. So we'll browse around for it. It is in temp, of course, because it's always in temp. YouTube demo, uh, and then this is Unity package underscore Godot right there, and let's open up that project right there. So import and edit, and we are off to the races. Now what this is going to do is give you a tool inside of the Godot game engine where you can import in Unity packages. So .unity package is kind of a, a zip archive type thing, which by the way, you can easily create these inside of Unity itself. So let's say I wanted to export out this Polygon pack right there. I could actually grab the pack that I want to export right here and just say, um, export package. And then we can pick all the stuff we want to do and put it in. So if you've got your own custom game, you want to export it out, you can export out your own Unity package, no problem at all. All right, so let's bet him back over here. And then what you're going to notice, once you've loaded it up, you have this guy right here, and you're good and ready to go. All you need to do now is you run this application. It loads up a little program for you. Say, uh, I want to import a Unity package, and then you find the one that you want. So for this next one, we're going to showcase one of these. So Medieval Camp. Let's open that guy up, and then pick the Unity package you wish, and then click Open. 
and it will fail because I screwed up one of the steps. Okay, let's get to the next step. What you want to do is open up Unity Package underscore Godot Config. Uh, what you're going to find over here in the settings, there's these two file names right there. If you are on Windows, you have to make sure you add .exe to the file names. Oops, my bad. All right, so let's stop that and let's run it again. And then now it should work. All right, so import the package. Let's go again back up a directory. Let's go find the medieval camp, pick it right here, and it will go ahead and load it down below. So you see here, it's going through and importing all of set assets in. You're going to notice them all available over here. So you see models, prefabs are brought in. Uh, so if I double click prefabs, you can see the options down here. And then I can pick a prefab and we can import it in that way. Or I can even bring in full scenes like here, demo scene, like so, and we are good to go. So I should be able to close that out now. And then what you'll notice is it's gonna pull all of the various different assets in from that scene. And you're gonna notice down here, the Unity Package Godot, that above that now, there is a folder called Imports, which by the way, this is also configurable in this uh, Unity underscore package Godot underscore config. You can see here where to extract it out to, but it is relative to the current project. So you could potentially, if you want to bring things into another project, you're going to have to use this as a proxy, but I'll show you how you can get around that in just a minute. So everything here will come into the Imports, like so. So all of your assets should be available here. Going down here, for example, let's grab Scenes and open up Demo Scene. And switch over to 3D, and there is the imported asset. Well, what you're finding is this isn't necessarily bringing in all of the content. So the cool thing here is it also turns prefabs into um, Unity-ready objects. So there we see a barrel that was created, a bottle, a cart. All right, cart didn't work chest. It's not perfect, but damn, is it ever close. So here you brought a number of your assets in. Now, let's say you want to bring the full scene in. Well, that's where the other guy comes in and really shines. So that is, uh, let's make sure we're not running over here. Okay. So head back on over here to our settings. And what you're going to notice, we have this other guy here, the Unidot importer. Now I tried this guy. This guy has been in development for years and there was a missing piece for it that this other project. So this updated Unity package made Unidot importer just Ah, chef's kiss. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and clone this guy right over here. So again, let's head back over here. This one installs as an add-on. So git, clone, boom. Just copy this into some directory somewhere, all right? Uh, so we now have this unit.importer. It's like so. Uh, there is the contents of it. This is an add-on. So what I'm just gonna do is open up an explorer window in this director by doing explorer dot. And then we're just going to take the entire content, so control A, and copy. We want all of this for the Unidot importer. Now we're just going to go back over here, and we're going to go to our project. So that's the Unity package underscore Godot right here. And we'll just create a new folder inside called add-ons. By the way, uh, spacing and typing matter, so all lowercase add-ons. And then here we're just going to do another new folder, and we'll call it Unidot, like so and then paste the contents in. So we're basically installing Unidot as a plugin for the Godot game engine. So head on back over here, and now we're gonna go project, project settings, and we've got plugins here, Unidot importer. Now you wanna go ahead and enable that guy. So now we have another option for importing. And the nice thing here is you can you switch between the two. So if you want, uh, you can just open up this main scene and run it and use that as a tool to bring things in. But now we have this other asset here, so we can actually get to it by tools, uh, import Unity package. But here's where we got to do a little bit of work first. What you want to do is go to Editor and Configure FBX Importer. And this is the magic sauce. This is the part that was missing for me all along and why Unidot didn't work that great for me is FBX to GLTF didn't work that great. So this other project, this Unity package project, made a custom fork of the FBX to um, GLTF this guy right here. So they now have their own special version of it. And this version works like magic. So what that version does is makes this other version uh, the other importer work just so much nicer. So let's go ahead and check out how that one works. So go up here. Now you'll see project tools, and you can import via a tool menu right here. So really all to make this work, by the way, you just need that FBX to GLTF from the other project instead of the one that ships with Godot. Uh, so now we can go ahead and find a new project. So let's bring something different in. So let's bring in Mega Vehicle Kit here. This is from uh, the other Humble Bundle that's going on. This guy, this guy right here. Um, so let's go ahead and bring that guy in here. So in order to do that, basically just select the Unity package. It brings up an entire list of them. So you can say, okay, go ahead, bring them in and show me the results. It will run through and handle everything. And then when it's done, so it's importing everything in. Now you are going to get some glitches. So I imagine it's going to be consistent to the last time I did this, in which case I had one giant machine gun for reasons I can't really explain. But we'll go ahead and let this run. It really doesn't take long. This, this importer actually seems to work quite a bit faster than the Unity package one. 
Uh, so this is my preference. I like using this guy more than the other one, just with the other um, FBX importer. So now that's done. What you're going to see is it does things a little bit different. So instead of putting things in the inputs folder, it puts them in the assets folder by the name of whatever you just pulled in. So here you see poly mega vehicle kit. And now we're going to go here and we'll open up the scene and we'll open up the vehicle demo scene. And let's see what it looks like. Boom. Awesome. So you want to have some models ready to go in your game? Boom. It just brings them in. And this is just this is insanely cool to me, to be honest, because this is picture perfect to what we started with. And then another thing you're going to see with this one is it also turns everything into prefabs. So it's ready to go in your world. You need a barricade, barricades, bring in the barriers. There you go. No problem. You hear you need vehicles, uh, truck prefab. Boom. There you go. Like that's awesome. It actually recreates them. You're going to notice it actually um, creates them as a hierarchy too. And a lot of times it also creates a uh, physics, uh, like a collision map for you and so on. So very impressive in that card. Now, the other thing, let's do a direct head-to-head -head compare. So this one, we brought it in, and this is what the um, the the end level looked like, remember? So we came in here. Uh, once we brought that in, so it's under the imports. So expand that down. Imports over here. And our final asset. So this one was really good for bringing in assets ready to go. But for recreating complex scenes... This is what the demo scene ended up looking like, plus the, the stuff I threw in. Now, let's do it with the other guys. So let's go project settings over here. Oops, not that one. Project, tools, import Unity package, like so. Let's go up a folder, like this guy right here. So that is the medieval camp. Click the medieval, the, the Unity package there. And uh, yeah, OK. Now, I don't get this UI. There's like this hide button, the OK button, and so on. So it still does some processing after the fact. It's a little weird in that regard, but you can pick what to bring in and what not to bring in. Uh, so that is now here. So let's go see how it did. So that one brings it in as uh, assets, medieval camp. So open up the same scene file. So what you're going to find is for complex scenes, this just generally does a better job. And then this is going to fail in because it's a YouTube demo, probably. Okay. Oh, no, here we go. Far clipping. We have some uh, weird... Oh, we're under the map. There we go. So you can see there is what the project should look like in that case. This one also brought in the other, you know, kind of the... Here's what's inside the pack scene. So for bringing in full configured scenes, if you've got an entire game level uh, that you've created in Unity and you want to bring it over and maybe you want to migrate over or whatever, this package is definitely the better one for it. I also find, to be honest, that this one uh, is a little bit faster as well. So you do have those two options. The nice thing is if this one fails, you can try the other one and vice versa. So that is just cool. We are spoiled for choices here. And these two, again, really work together um, to make uh, things perfect. I would love to see these project kind of merge together uh, and um, really shine in that regard. But it's pretty sweet on the whole. And again, if one of these fails, so if Unity Package doesn't do what you need, try the Unidot Importer. If the Unidot Importer doesn't work for you, try this one. But the key thing here is if you are going to use the Unidot Importer, you really, really, really want to use this custom version of the FBX Importer right here. So uh, Barcoder, uh, Barcoder Dev here has done some work there. So if you head on back over here, you can see he's actually got a repository where he's created a custom version of this uh, that is you know, just better working for this kind of task. And it's just, this is the secret sauce that made everything work for me. Uh, before that, I tried this guy using the standard FBX importer and it was very hit or miss on what it would fail on. With this version of the FBX importer, this Unidot becomes mwah, perfect. So if you want to move from the Unity game engine over to the Godot game engine, uh, it's just become is so incredibly easy, which is very cool. So again, this exact project, what we're seeing right here, this guy right here, this came from uh, Eldmar here, this this guy right uh, here. Again, I'll link to all of them down below. So low fantasy pack, it's, it's here somewhere. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to just take that over. So let's actually show you the process. I did this one off screen originally. The best way to bring in the entire scene again is to use this particular version over here. Just go tools, import Unity package, go back up here, find that file. So this guy right here, Pick the version that you want to bring in. So I'll bring in the uh, built-in pipeline. And then uh, you can actually import it and have it show results. And it will bring it all in. I think the other one fails because it runs into a PDF file, which it really does not expect to do so. Uh, but it, this is the import process. It's not 
is nothing, no real work involved at all. By the way, you could actually go through and check and like literally just pull in. I only want to bring in this material set, this um, mesh and so on, and then it's done. So let's go ahead. We'll hide this guy out. And then what you're going to notice, so that guy should now be here in the, okay, so Eldemar Studios right here. So there is our scene imported, and that was the process of moving this Unity scene that we see right here over to Godot. Over here, I'm going to just go down here. Let's find the scene, open it up, and presto. Uh, so obviously, you're going to see things look a little bit different. That's because all the collision meshes are on right now. So if you want, you go in here, gizmos, and you can turn that off. So, so there is the one, there is the other, and that's literally how long it took to, to create it over. You're going to notice it also when it imported it, it did things like create um, a world environment for it, even created a FPS control. So it's actually even trying to bring in logic from the other uh, game, character, game uh, side, which is just staggeringly amazing, to be honest. So uh, between these two, you could do some pretty magical stuff. So that is the uh, barcoder dev version, the uh, Unity package Godot, and the existing project, the Unit.Importer. In my opinion, what I think I would try as my first run is use the Unit.Importer, but do it with the barcoder dev FBX to GLTF project, and the results are just almost picture perfect. It's pretty amazing what it brings in. You know, you are going to run into some um, issues at times. You know, things are going to not be 100% perfect. You're going to get that no matter how you look at it. But I'm just amazed by just how good of a job it actually does uh, out of the box. And again, you can configure the world environment. So if you want to instead have, you know, sign distance field global illumination turned on, you can. If you want to turn tone mapping on, you can. And, you know, immediately get slightly different results. But what you're getting is quite literally workable out of the box. So if you have a Unity project and you kind of wanted to migrate it over, uh, you've got that capability here now, which is super, super impressive. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.